Hello everybody, Simone here with Bulletproof Business Growth, as always with some ideas and insights, what to really pay attention to when you are growing and scaling your business. Now, I know what's always on everybody's mind is accountability, because having clear accountability in your team, that's a lot like taking the guesswork work out of growth, because now you can actually predict, you can plan, you can be purposeful, because you know exactly how you're actually going to get results out of all your plans. Because when you don't have clear accountability systems, generally it means you have a lot of chaos going on. So we're really looking to go from the chaos to calm because how much does it suck when things are not getting done and you're always looking for, you know, did get things, did things get done? Did they get done right? Following up, constantly hounding people and feeling like you can't focus because there's so many loose ends in your brain. So we really want to get past that because you can't strategize, you can't push if you can't rely on your team, if you can't rely on when you have delegated that things will actually get done. If your team is not accountable, it is a huge bottleneck to your thinking and your ability to really push the business forward. But I want you to remember, I want you to remember you get what you tolerate and also you get what you set up. So let's talk a little bit about what those clear processes are and the pieces to the process that will really help you set this up right. Because it all comes down to the three P's. We can't do without the three P's, which are people, priority, and processes. So let's kind of look at what that means. Because with the people, what that means is it's really time to define. It's, and there's two different things that we have to define. One is the who, as in who's the right person for the job. And part of that is to really look at everybody in your team and make sure that they have the four attributes that we're always looking for that makes them the right person for the job. So for one thing, and we call it the four it's, right? The first one is that they have to have the capacity to do it, right? They have to have the skill set. They have to have the thinking. They have to have the strategy. So everything that it takes to have the capacity to actually be amazing at their job, they have to have it. But then the other part is, is like they have to get it as in, and it here is they have to get your company. They have to get who you are. They have to get your culture. They have to be a team fit and really show up at the level that your company needs them to show up for the phase of business you're in. You know, it's, it's a little bit different when you're just kind of cruising and things are easy and everything is predictable and pretty figured out. People don't need to show up so high level. <laughs> but if it's challenging and you're in a growth fa phase and there's a lot of ambiguity and where people have to be resourceful and internally resourced, and this is a really big part, it takes a lot more. So if you are in a little bit more of a tumultuous challenging phase of business, you have to have the right people who can be with you and can take you through that. Because otherwise, it'll feel like not only do you have to take care of yourself and make sure that you stay in that leadership position, then you stay in, stay in the right mindset, but then you have to do it for everybody else, which is not reasonable. It's, it's not doable. So you have to make sure that you have to write the right people with you who can help you grow the business and who are in the right mindset and, and framework so that they're the right fit for the phase of business you're in. So that's number one. Then talking about the, the other two, the part that goes with that is what are they right for? And that's where you really are responsible to help them figure that out because that means they have to have a very clear understanding of what they're responsible for. So job description is a super benign word to use here, but that's basically what it means. They have to understand what their um, goals are, what their responsibilities are, what their lane is that they're responsible for. 
So that's a really, really important part because a lot of times, you know, our business owner clients, they think people should just know that because they have a title of some sort. And let's be honest, titles are, I mean, who cares, right? They, they're vague. They mean something different to everybody else. There's especially, there's some positions that, that truly mean something different in every single company. So whatever they mean, um, that's not that important. What we really have to go for is to get really clear with very specific core responsibilities here. So they have to understand where they're truly pushing the needle and what their role means in terms of your entire business strategy, what the impact is, what the slices that they own, that they're accountable for, that they have authority over, right? So, and that's a really, really important part because for people to be truly accountable, they have to know what decisions they control. And that has, that also means I just mentioned authority. They have to have the authority to run with that. So you have to help them understand which, which decisions they can make on their own, which ones they need consulting on and which ones they can't make. Right. So, so this is a really, really important piece. And part of that means you have to give them a decision making framework. So again, that's that part of where they really understand, Hey, like in my lane, what are the decisions I can run with on my own? And that's super important because a lot of our clients complain about, Hey, you know, I have all these people and they actually, I know that they can do what I'm asking them to do, but they're constantly coming to me for every little decision that they need to make. So they're constantly interrupting me. They're constantly sucking on my bandwidth and they're constantly getting in my way and, and, um, distracting me from the stuff that I really need to do. So I don't get anything done. And the biggest reason for that happening is that your people don't have a decision making framework that they can follow so that they can make decisions on their own, that they can make higher level decisions on their own, that they don't really need to ask you and that they're comfortable with. So you have to give them this framework, which means one, they have to know what they can decide. So you have to give them parameters. Then the second step is, is if there's something that they cannot decide because either they don't have the knowledge or they feel like it's, it's outside their wheelhouse. Well, who are their three that they can ask, right? We always say in our company, ask three before you ask me, because that means that they need to understand who is their network that they can ask, who can make them that decision. And then if the network can handle it, then it's about asking me. So what do they have to ask you for? What do you absolutely want them to ask you for so that they can, they get approval. And I want you to think really carefully about this because when you're used to pretty much controlling everything and having to control everything and having to micromanage everything, and this is your first foray into seriously disconnecting from that and seriously giving your, your team more ownership really think about this is like, what's the stuff that you truly need to weigh in on? And because a lot of times the answer, you, you think it's everything, but when you really think about it, you will find out that there's actually tons of things that you don't need to be asked for. And here's, here's the really important part. This is not just about you. So, this is also, yes, you have to have that framework with your leaders, but then your leaders have to have that same framework with whoever they're leading. So hopefully you, you don't have a completely flat organization. So hopefully you have structure in your organization. So you lead your leaders and whoever your leaders are leading, they have to follow that same decision-making framework. So you train your leaders and then they go 
and they're turning into train the trainers so that this framework persists throughout your entire organization. So that's number one, the people. Second is, as we mentioned, priorities. So you have to prioritize execution. And, you know, we're, we're a couple of weeks into Q2 now. So I really hope that you have a really solid plan for Q2 that helps your team understand what the goals and objectives are, what the results and the outcomes are that they're driving, and what they're responsible for. So you have to have that really, really good plan because otherwise everybody's unfocused and trying to do too many things at the same time and you won't be driving results. So you'll start with having that quarterly plan, but for some of you, planning for a whole quarter will seem far too much. It's far too big of a ch time chunk. It's far too big of a project. So think about what's appropriate for you to plan for. So if you're in a pretty good place and you feel like you're, you're pretty um, solid, you definitely want to plan for, you know, our, our thing is three years, one year, quarter, and then you keep chunking that down. But if that's not where you are, then think about what time frame is a time frame you feel like you can control. For some of you, that might only be a week or two weeks or a month, six weeks, right? And for some of you, it might work better to think of it by the job or by the project because you can use the same framework for longer or shorter time periods or very specific areas of focus. So whatever you're picking, make sure you're picking something so that you have a very solid framework to talk to your team about very frequently. So what you what you want to do in your in your quarterly plan here is strategize your top goals and generally you can't really handle more than 1 to 3 per quarter. So we do it in a very holistic way where we don't just look at you know, methods and metrics, which is kind of what OKRs do or, or KPIs or whatever. We can't just look, what we've learned is we can't just look at the actions for people to take. We have to give them a lot more of an overview for, you know, what are we actually trying to achieve in general for this time period. And then we have to address the historic gaps that we already know about in people's values, standards, behaviors, mindset, all that, because if it's something that keeps popping up, so it's, it's kind of like you're a fatal flaw that keeps showing up no matter what you do, then you have to address that before you push forward, because otherwise it'll be like Groundhog Day and you'll have the same situation over and over and over again. So we have to address not just the overview and the actions, but also the behaviors, mindsets, standards, all that kind of stuff that people have to really focus on if they are going to push it and make this breakthrough into a different level of performance and results. So once you've done that, then you can truly focus on what are the actions that we're going to take to get from A to B. And of course, those actions have to be measurable because otherwise, how are we going to know what done looks like, right? So we want to make sure that all of that stuff is measurable because once you have this process in place, that also means part of the process is that every week you meet with your team and you reprioritize for focus because yes, we have a great plan, but as we all know, things in business change all the time. So we have to stay current. We have to stay focused on what the true priorities are. So every week we have to help everybody understand if things have shifted and how they have shifted and what that means to them so that they can do an amazing job and be accountable for us, which they cannot be otherwise. So what that means is you have your, your quarterly plan, but then you have a weekly scoreboard that chunks things down even further, that takes priorities into account. And the really great thing about that scoreboard is it's supposed to be transparent. So everybody has insight into it. So you can use 
you know, some people use something as simple as a giant whiteboard in their office. Uh, and a lot of people will use some sort of PM tool like Asana or Trello or whatever you're using. But it's got to be something. It could just be a Google Doc that everybody has insight into. But whatever it is, it has to be shared. It has to be transparent. Because that means everybody's clear about what the accountability is, not just for themselves, but also for the other people that they're relying on to get their stuff done so they can get their own stuff done, right? So we have to make sure that it's a transparent and clear um, accountability tool that everybody is using. So now we're talking, we talked about people, we talked about priorities. Now, the processes really are around making sure that this stuff stays in action because plans are great, but what we really want is execution and results. So number one for that is, and we kind of already alluded to that, is your weekly leadership team meetings. So, and those have to hap happen again, like everything else at every single level of your company where you meet with your leaders and you have this high level meeting with them. But then also the really important part is that they do the same thing with their team. So we're again in the train the trainer situation where you're training your leaders to become the leaders of their teams and they're using the same framework that you're using. So it's something that persists all the way through the company. So Weekly, we're meeting, like we already said, we're redefining the priorities in our weekly action review. And what we do in those meetings is very simple. We celebrate wins so that your team knows what's actually working that they're doing. Not so much to inflate their egos or to give them kudos, but yes, you're doing that because that means they're going to do more of it. They're going to be excited that they had impact. They're going to be excited that they produced results that mattered. And then they're going to do more of that. And then, of course, you want to discuss the challenges. If there was misses, if timelines didn't get met, if there was any sort of um, deliverables that didn't happen, we need to talk about that. It's not about blaming people, but it's about as a team to get together and develop better strategy that everybody's going to use. So we have to teach them to prepare for these meetings to go for these meetings to go right because otherwise you'll have a whole group of people who are just kind of staring at you and waiting for you to perform so you have to teach them that this is a situation where they're expected to prepare and walk in with things already thought through with questions they know they have with questions they know they need to answer so everybody can truly benefit from everybody working together so this is really, they, they have to come to the question with, to, to the uh, meeting with questions, with strategy. They have to know what they need help with. Because one thing that we always talk about is the only, you know, meetings are, if they're not done right, they're a tremendous amount, a tremendous amount of waste, right? Because it's, it's so much time that just disappears that could otherwise be used for being productive. So meetings done wrong is a tremendous <clears throat> waste of time, resources, and money because how many people just spend an hour, right? So that could be an entire working day that's gone. But when you prepare people right and they understand the structure and they walk in prepared like we just said, and they understand that they're there for two things only, to either give or receive or both. And if they can't give or receive in this meeting, you, they're wasting your time. They're, they're wasting valuable, precious company time that they're getting paid for. So that's why it's so important that you teach your team what meetings are for and how to be in them and what's expected in terms of deliverables. So in that meeting, of course, you want to address the delays and accomplishments. But what you really don't want to do is use meetings as this boring status update where everybody kind of glazes over because either they already know or they don't really care. So to make for the status update, you don't need 10 people in a room. You can, what we teach our clients to do is a weekly update to the business owner. Um, you can use Slack, you can use the scoreboard, 
there's many different ways you can let people know what's actually going on. So instead, we really want to focus on strategic alignment, focus on the plan in those meetings. So the way you want to intensify accountability around that is those metrics we talked about, that they're transparent for all the priorities and deadlines. So everybody has really good insight into well, for, for one thing, they know what they're responsible for and by when, but they also know what somebody else is responsible for and by when, which we all impact each other. So, you know, if Mike next door here is not getting his job done, that means I'm not going to get mine done and I'm going to be able to know what's going on because I can check in with Mike while we're talking about transparency. Mike's going to actually come to me and... um uncover situations early so I can know how to make my own adjustments. So now we're actually talking about a team that thinks strategically and that doesn't wait for things just to fall apart and go, oh, well, I, I can't do my job now, right? So we really want to make sure that we use some sort of shared PM system for progress updates so that we always have visibility into it. And then during those weekly action review meetings, we look at our quarterly plan, we look at the weekly scoreboard, and we discuss. So everybody walks away with clear accountability, and they can actually execute. So it's very, very important that, again, like we already talked about, everybody has that decision-making framework in place so that they know who their help network is. So when they're running into some sort of problems that they know exactly who to ask. And part of that is also that you have a clear org chart that helps everybody understand, you know, who's responsible for what and who's connected. So when they do need help, they understand who their network is. And, you know, finally, with all of this stuff, what they're going to look at is you. So you are... The model you have to lead from the front because they're going to model their behavior after yours. So if you're on time for meetings, they're going to be much more likely to be on time. If you're somebody who stresses accountability and show up and customer service and all like your values all the time, if that's something you talk about all the time, you have clear values and you live them, well, they will too. If you don't, you're going to see them picking up the same bad habits they see in you. So you have to really uphold these priorities and you have to really be what you expect them to be. So you you want to, when you make these changes, it's really important that you give a lot of praise, that you highlight when somebody has come up with strategies, with solutions, when somebody has been proactive and you want to highlight that and praise them in, pub in public so everybody else gets to hear that and everybody else wants to be in their shoes. So that's what you do in public, in private, you know, when something isn't going well, you take them for a one-on-ones and you become their poach, their coach, you, you become the one who's unblocking them you're the one who's telling the truth for their own benefit because that means you're going to help them grow, which is very, very important. So with those three P's in place, now your team has direction, they have clarity, they have accountability, they have transparency. That means now they're truly the owners of their outcomes and this ownership is shared. Now you have an entire team that, that's doing that. And that's going to help you to get huge momentum and growth in place, much more than you could have ever done on your own. So I hope this helped. Listen to this multiple times so you can really wrap your head around how you need to make changes or want to make changes in your organization. We have a brand new training out there that covers all this in detail. Go to bulletproofbusinessgrowth.com slash leap, bulletproofbusinessgrowth.com slash leap. Check out the training and I will see you next time.